wants to talk about food. <laughs> you do, I know you do because you have been asking me for years to do videos about how I eat, what I eat, what I cook, how I stock up my RV to be boondocking for two weeks and sometimes longer at a time. And especially as a vegan, many of you have been really curious, how do I eat? What do I eat? What does a vegan eat anyway? <laughs> Maybe I should also explain what a vegan is. I think I'll do that. So today I'm gonna show you when I go into town to stock up my refrigerator and my cupboards to go boondocking for as long as I can until I run out of supplies, what do I buy? I'm going to show you today exactly what I stock my RV with so that I can stay full and fed and healthy, hopefully most of the time I try, <laughs> work in progress, uh, while I am boondocking and dry camping on public land. Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. You ready to talk food? This is all the stuff that I pretty much always have on hand. These are the staples that I live on most of the time. That doesn't mean this is all I buy. There's still stuff in my cupboards. So I'm, today I'm just going to show you what I stock my RV with when I'm going to be going out and boondocking for as long as I can until I run out of supplies. And this is just everything that I normally have on hand and I can easily make two weeks worth of meals breakfast, lunch, and dinner snacks out of everything that you see here. And the next video, I'm gonna show you how I prepare my produce so that I can fit all of this in my refrigerator. I don't have a huge refrigerator. I have an RV refrigerator, which is bigger than some, but it's not a full size like house refrigerator by any means, it's still pretty small. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I prepare all my produce uh, including, you know, my big thing of spinach so that I can fit it all in my refrigerator and so that it lasts. Because the biggest question a lot of you have is how the heck do you make produce last for two weeks? And I can do it. <laughs> and I'm going to show you in the next video how to do that. Sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can learn that as well as some recipes throughout the summer. I'm going to be actually shooting, turning on the camera while I make some of my meals. Again, many of you have been asking for cooking videos for a long time and I said I wouldn't do them, but alas. <laughs> Here we are. I'm going to do cooking videos because you keep asking. And uh, and I know some of the people that I have met face to face are really just don't know. They don't like to cook. They think that it's really complicated to cook. And so, I mean, part of the reason I never wanted to do cooking videos is because I don't do anything fancy. I mean, you know, I just throw a bunch of stuff in a pot with some spices and eat it. <laughs> so, But I realize now that that might be really helpful because maybe for some reason uh, cooking is just something Thing that you think is a lot more complicated than it is. And so I'm, I'm going to share with you what I make. First of all, though, let's talk about me being a vegan uh, or mostly vegan. Uh, <laughs> some of the diehard vegans hate it when I call myself a vegan, but you know, the way I look at it, I am vegan 98% of the time. So, um, anyway, so I'm going to call myself a vegan if I want to. So what is a vegan? Well, many of you know what a vegetarian is, right? A vegetarian doesn't eat meat. Well, a vegan goes a step further and doesn't eat anything that comes from any living animal, mammal, fish, or anything. So whereas a vegetarian will still eat dairy, will still eat eggs, will um, some vegetarians eat fish, a vegan won't eat anything that comes from an animal, they won't wear anything that comes from an animal, they won't, a, a true like hardcore vegan, which I am not, won't even eat anything that animals are used in the processing of, for example, honey. Uh, vegans won't eat honey because bees produce honey. Uh, I don't understand that. I don't know that it harms bees to produce honey. So, and I don't want to get into a, a debate about that. That's just my own personal feeling. I, I've never really fully understood that. So while I'm not like a perfect 100% vegan, I do try to eat vegan most of the time. And why did I become a vegan? Because of health reasons. I mean, not that I don't care about animals. And in fact, all my life, I've been really kind of squirmish about, uh, about eating meat. When I was young and we started getting the beef from my aunt and uncle's Black Angus farm. And it, uh, you know, it, all of a sudden the steak on my plate had a face, the cow that I pet in the pasture. Uh, I've always been really kind of weird about me. In fact, before I became a vegan, I had thought about becoming a vegetarian for many, many years. And it, it got to the point where the only thing I could eat was chicken and pork, 
no bones, no skin, no tendons, nothing gross. I couldn't eat anything on a bone. Uh, I really kind of had to like take my mind off the fact that it came from an animal. I, I was just very squeamish that way. And I became a vegan because I started, I was working out a lot. I, you know, had run a half marathon and I was lifting weights and I started having a lot of um, issues. I was in a lot of pain in between a nutritionist and a chiropractor and a personal trainer. I, I realized actually through my chiropractor, he said, let's cut out some of the inflammatory, the foods that cause in inflammation. Soy, um, sugar, alcohol, dairy, wheat. I think there was one more. And he said, just try it for 90 days and then we'll slowly add things back in and we'll see you know, if you have a problem with any of those. I wasn't eating soy, a lot of soy at the time because I wasn't vegetarian yet. So I was basically cutting out dairy and wheat. And within two weeks of cutting out dairy and wheat, I didn't even think. And I came home from the gym and I made a whey protein shake, <laughs> not even thinking that whey is dairy. And I felt it immediately. Um, I mean, it, when I was still eating dairy, I couldn't even sit Indian style. I couldn't even cross my legs. I had so much inflammation in my knees and my hips and my joints. And so after I ate, drink that whey protein shake, I realized uh, dairy was a huge in infl inflammation thing for me. And then wheat, many of you know, I'm also wheat free. I'm not gluten free. I'm wheat free because wheat causes migraines. So once I, once I realized I had a problem with dairy and dairy was causing me a lot of physical problems, I was like, well, you know what? I've been wanting to become a vegetarian for a long time anyway. And if I can't eat ice cream or cheese, <laughs> I might as well become a vegan and I did so it's been about four and a half years now since I have become a vegan and I noticed a change immediately the first few months of becoming a vegan I lost weight and of course over the years I just went to the doctors recently I've gained 20 pounds since I've been on the road uh, you know and that's just I'm not going to the gym every day I'm I don't have that I work a lot so I'm just sitting in here on the computer 8 10 12 hours a day between work and just watching TV and social media and uh, you know and and I don't eat as healthy as I used to I go into town and I feel like oh I want a treat you know and so I buy cookies or cake or something and I'm slowly moving away from that again too and, and finding a balance the first year there's a lot of change a lot of people lose a lot of people gain weight their first year on the road your whole world is just upended and so um, uh, for many of us kind of just lose track of of eating healthy and doing healthy things to take care of ourselves but anyway that is my story of of being a vegan and I yeah, I, you know, I did it like the impetus for doing it when I did it was health reasons, but I do also care very much about the environment. I do care about animals and especially uh, even before I became a vegan, I was buying only free range, cage free and all of that. But so that's my story. That's what a vegan is. And um, and so everything I'm going to show you today is my vegan gluten free diet. Um, that I eat while I'm uh, while I'm boondocking and while I'm in my RV. All right. So first of all, let's talk about produce. I'm just going to show you some of the things that I always have on hand as far as produce. Number one, usually it's if I'm not going to be gone for two weeks, I'll usually just buy one one of these, either spinach or kale. Uh, I like to have my dark leafy greens around. So. If, I'm, if I know though that I'm an hour away from a store and I'm going and I'm just gonna be sitting put, staying put for a while, I will buy both. And again, make sure you subscribe because next cooking video, I'm gonna show you, or cooking or food video, I'm gonna show you how I prepare these so that I can fit them in my refrigerator and so that they last as long as they can. Actually, I think I can make my spinach and my kale last about two weeks and I'll show you that. Spinach and kale, I can eat both of these raw. Uh, I love kale and you, the way I prepare kale is to remove it from the stems and chop it up super, super small like confetti. And then you can throw it in anything you cook and you get good, healthy, leafy greens and you don't even taste it. You can throw it in pasta. You can throw it in soups. Usually I just mix it up with like some beans and some salsa and I'll talk about that in a minute. Those are 
two things I go to a lot. And the same with spinach. One of my favorite spinach inspirations is just to throw it in a pot with a little bit of sesame oil and some fresh ginger and uh, tamari or liquid aminos. And that'll be my dinner. Or I'll throw a little to uh, tofu in there and that'll be my dinner. And also, of course, both of these can be eaten raw. And again, if you're not a huge fan of kale, one of the things that I didn't like is how tough it is. But this is my favorite one, the curly, super crisp green one. I, I try to buy everything organic when I can. And I just chop it up super small with some olive oil and some salt and pepper. And it's, and it's really good as a salad. Uh, broccoli, you can steam it and put garlic powder on it, a little bit of salt, and sometimes that's just what I have for lunch. And my heirloom tomatoes, when I can, I buy heirloom tomatoes. And these I eat just raw. I'll slice them up and put some coarse sea salt on them. I also love them for lunch on a thin rice cake with hummus. So I'll spread some hummus on a rice cake and slice a tomato with some coarse sea salt. And that is like one of my favorite lunches ever. What, whether I'm on the road or sometimes I'm just really just working all day trying to get a video done and soda. I don't always take the time to cook and I'll just break this out and that'll be my lunch. So heirloom tomatoes, love these, good in salads. You can have them in the, the spinach salad or the kale salad. I don't really eat lettuce. I make my salads with kale or spinach, but um, these are so good. And the heirloom to me are worth the extra cost. They really taste like tomatoes. Uh, they're organic, they're really good. I always, um, almost always have carrots on hand. And these again, usually lunch and I can make soup with them. So I really like having carrots and celery on board. And again, another snack or lunch with hummus. So, or with my almond butter, uh, celery and almond butter or uh, celery and peanut butter. I always have pretty, one or the other, sometimes both on board, either almond butter. I like peanut butter a lot better than almond butter, but almond butter is a little healthier and I always buy organic. If I don't buy organic peanut butter, I get migraines, but organic peanut butter, I don't get migraines. So who knows what they put in the non-organic and I always have a pepper on hand just because I can throw it in anything I can uh, stir fry I eat a lot of black beans and I'll get to that in a minute but I always have this on board of course with oops with an onion with onions and garlic which is actually back here fresh garlic uh, sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes and they last a long time and I'll always have these on board again with black beans. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just roast these in the oven and then mix them with some black beans and salsa and have that for dinner. Uh, sometimes I'll make sweet potato french fries. Uh, sometimes I'll just roast them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil and throw some liquid aminos or tamari. And for those of you who don't know what tamari is, tamari is a wheat free soy sauce. Most soy sauce has wheat in it, but tamari is, doesn't. And it's got a little bit of a different flavor and liquid aminos is, uh, a, a, an alternative to soy sauce. Uh, kind of the same flavor, a little richer. Have you ever had roasted sweet potatoes with soy sauce? Really, really good. So that'll be for dinner sometimes. I don't, like I said, I mean, I don't do anything fancy. Sometimes I really just piece together stuff. It's just like, you know, just nibble on whatever is there. And then my, oops, oops, it rolled outside. And my absolute favorite, probably my favorite food these days is avocado. And I always have plenty of avocado on hand to make guacamole so that I can have uh, chips and guacamole. But I'm trying to break this habit, I'm trying to get away from the, the snacking. But I do always have chips on board. This makes great guacamole. And this is a really, really good healthy fat. Healthy fat is supposed to curb your appetite. I've been trying to stay away from the sugar and put more healthy fats in my diet. So um, avocado is really good for that. Slice it up, put it in salads, spread it on bread to have with your sandwiches instead of mayo. And I'm also trying to get away from the vegan A's, which is really unhealthy, crappy vegan food. There's a lot of really crappy. So I try to eat whole foods as much as I can. I don't always want to take a half hour out or 45 minutes to cook. So, uh, so I do have more canned and, and prepared food than, than I would like. Sometimes, honestly, I'll just cut it open, throw in some garlic powder and some sea salt and mix it up and just eat it just like that. It's so good. Or I'll 
throw it on. Uh, uh, I love these thin ones, the thin rice cakes, so much better than the thick ones and they don't fall apart as much. So I always have these on hand. You can also have mix up your avocado with sea salt and um, onion powder and garlic powder and spread it on celery. And that's also a really good snack or lunch. That's my produce. One of the questions I get asked all the time is how the heck do vegans get enough protein in their diet? Well, one thing is that we're obsessed with protein. We get plenty of protein. For some reason, our society is obsessed with protein. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's the dairy industry, the meat industry. I don't know what it is, but uh, we don't need as much protein as we have been led to believe that we need. And it's really not that hard to get protein in your diet. This has protein in it. This has protein in it. Hummus has protein in it. This has protein in it. So a lot of the vegetables we eat, and since we do eat probably more vegetables than the average person, we're getting a lot of protein from our vegetables. But I also get protein, of course, from my tofu. And I always make sure I've got tofu on hand. And how do you cook tofu? Well, you know what? Sometimes I just take it directly out of the package and just throw it in a pan with onions and garlic and salt and pepper and saute it up. You're supposed to press the water out of it first, but again, I don't always prepare ahead of time. I don't always have time. And you know, it'll be like six o'clock and I'll be like, oh, I'm hungry, I need dinner, I've been working all day. And I just open it up and throw it in a pan and steam it out. I'll throw some spinach in a pan and that'll be my dinner, either with some um, tamari or aminos or or salsa and of course soy is an excellent source of protein and I when I can I buy non-gmo organic which is not that easy to find you can oftentimes either find organic or non-gmo but you can't always find both and I got this at sprouts you can press it so you this is packed in water so you open it up you cut it in half you wrap it up in paper towels or a towel I use unbleached paper towels because if I am wrapping up my tofu in it, I don't want chemicals from bleach and all kinds of other stuff from regular paper towels leaching into it. So I buy, and these are pretty expensive, so I only use them for my tofu. Press it, and I usually just put my cast iron skillet on top of it and press as much water out of it as you can for maybe overnight. And then you can throw it in the oven. You can marinate it. There are different marinades that you can make. Just Google tofu marinades. You know, you can use um, liquid aminos or tamari and honey or maple syrup or and, and orange juice so um, or sesame oil. Usually what I do is I just put it in the oven with salt and pepper and then I just eat it like that. Tahini, tahini is another thing that I keep on hand that I didn't stock, that I didn't bring down here to show you. Tahini is sesame seed butter. And sometimes I'll just mix with fresh ginger and soy sauce and rice vinegar, which I have here. Rice vinegar is another thing I keep on hand. And uh, and then I'll just dip the tofu in that. So tofu is one of my sources of protein. Lentils is, a, is another good source of protein and I love lentils. They're easy to cook. You can make lentil soup. You can just, you know, make lentil beans and you can mix it up with some pe pepper, sweet pepper. You can mix some sweet potatoes in with it and some kale and you can make a nice salad out of it. So I love lentils. And then hemp hearts. Hemp hearts are a, also a really good source, really healthy. They've got a lot of protein. They've got a lot of really good omegas. And I will sprinkle these on my salad. So if I have a kale salad or whatever. Oh, another thing you can do with tofu, which is one of my favorite easy go-to meals, is a tofu scramble, which is like scrambled eggs only with tofu. And then I just throw a whole bunch of spinach in there. So I'm getting a lot of really good greens in there and I'm getting really good protein and uh, again stay tuned I will probably be making a tofu scramble and showing you black beans I eat a ton of black beans I love black beans I do have dry ones but again that's too much planning for me I even have a slow cooker now thanks to Bobby Jean thank you who gave me one at the WRTR uh, but I still just always buy canned ones. They're just so much easier. And I, I do, I eat everything with black beans. I'll throw tofu in, I'll throw sweet potatoes in, I'll uh, saute them up with a pepper and, you know, with a pepper and onions and garlic. And like I said, I mean, I don't do anything fancy. I just throw a bunch of stuff together. Oh, and salsa. I always have salsa on hand because that just adds instant flavor 
and it's different from tomato sauce. I keep tomato sauce on hand too, but for some reason I like salsa better. This is more of like a spaghetti flavor and this is more of like, of course, a Southwest flavor. And between these two things and kale and spinach and a little chipotle seasoning, I mean, I could live on that pretty much. Oh, and then throw some avocado on top and you've got a really great meal right there. All right, I also always have garbanzo beans. I love garbanzo beans. You can make garbanzo bean salad sandwiches with a little bit of mustard and vegan A's, which is a um, substitute for like chicken salad. And so that's pretty good. But I also just like plain garbanzo beans and I'll just eat them right out of the can sometimes, throw them on my salad, throw them in soups. I'll make a lentil soup or I'll make a black bean soup and a vegetable soup and throw these beans in. I also have kidney beans on, on hand just because, you know, I might make a bean soup, might make a chili. Coconut milk. I always have coconut milk on hand. I can do um, so many things with coconut milk if I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff together and I want it to be a little creamier. I use coconut milk. I also make a lot of curry. I love curry and that is another reason I keep sweet potatoes on hand. I love sweet potatoes in my curry. And I'll just make a curry and throw in sweet potatoes, throw in carrots. Sometimes I'll just throw it over kale. I don't, I have rice, like I've had rice up in my cupboard for like a year. I have rice, I have quinoa. So sometimes I'll cook up some quinoa, but not a lot. Usually I'll just eat my curry, like over a salad or just with potatoes or sweet potatoes and not really over rice and sometimes over lentils. But, uh, coconut milk is just something awesome to have on hand. Again, um, healthy-ish. There's debate about that, whether it's a healthy form of fat. But um, I do love my coconut milk. Uh, I do keep some dried beans. Like I said, I've got dried beans on hand. These are pinto beans, I think. Uh, they've been up there a long time. I just don't bother making them. But I do have them on hand, so I'm never going to starve to death. <laughs> plenty of supplies on hand uh, should I need them as backup. But luckily living in an RV, I have uh, the luxury of having the room. I always keep organic vegetable broth on hand. Again, I can make soup with it. I can use it in liquid and anything that I need that I'm cooking up. You know, it's just kind of nice to have that on hand. I do also usually have, especially in the winter, I'll have a couple pre-made soups on hand. Again, just if I'm busy, if I'm on the road, towards the end of my stay of boondocking or whatever, and I'm running low on supplies, I'll open up one of these and have a quick dinner or lunch. This is minestrone with farro, and this is Thai sweet potato. This is so freaking good. I love that stuff. And yeah, I can make this. And sometimes that's what I do. Um, I'll make like a giant pot of soup or a giant pot of chili or curry and I'll eat it for like four or five days until I'm sick of it. And then I'll put the rest in the freezer so that I have it. In fact, I've got something in the freezer that's been in there a while. Um, other things that I do for lunch, I always have some kind of tortillas on hand. I just discovered these coconut ones and I love them. They're coconut coconut flour tortillas because I don't eat wheat uh, and they are really really good they're good for wraps if I want to have a sandwich so that's another thing you can kind of um, either fry up the tofu or bake it up and make it kind of crisp and then you can wrap it in a wrap with some spinach and maybe some mustard or some tahini and you can have a nice sandwich but this is one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> this stuff is really not healthy. It's not good for you, but it's delicious. It's kind of like vegan Velveeta. <laughs> uh, but it's a quick lunch, especially if I'm on the road. This is really good to have on hand. And that's pretty much usually I think when I eat it. Well, no. This is my go-to when I'm really lazy. When I'm really lazy, even if like I don't feel like making dinner, um, I'll just... Um, these are also really good. I just found these sweet potato gluten-free tortillas. These are like the best I've ever had. These were so good. More like the consistency of tortillas where, where these are a little um, 
drier, I guess. If I'm feeling really lazy, that'll be my dinner. A couple tortillas on the stove with melted cheese, some avocado, some chips, and some salsa, and that'll be my dinner. That's a super easy, super lazy, not very healthy, but not too bad. This is probably the worst, and it's just made out of oil and sodium, but that'll be one of my really good lazy dinners. Speaking of lazy dinners, I always have some kind of veggie burger on, on board, and it kind of just depends. I have on board whatever I can find. Hillary's is a brand that I can pretty much find in a lot of places, some grocery stores, some not, but in Sprouts or in uh, natural grocers, or of course Whole Foods has them. But I'll always have one of these on, bo on board. But if I feel like my salad needs a little something that isn't a vegetable, I'll go ahead and heat this up and just throw it in my salad. Um, but I also do usually have bread on board. This is good for toast. I'll make toast with vegan butter or sandwiches, peanut butter sandwiches or almond butter sandwiches. And sometimes if I make the chickpea salad, sometimes I'm in the mood for that, but usually it just stays in my freezer for quite a while. It'll take me a while to go through a loaf of bread, usually. Sometimes I get in the mood where I just want a sandwich every day, but usually this stays in my freezer for a while. But it's really good to have on hand and uh, grilled cheese. I do like the vegan grilled cheese I'll make with, with soup once in a while. So vegan bread is something I also, vegan gluten-free bread is something I also always have on board. And then what do I eat for breakfast? Well, I just recently stopped I've, all my life I had eaten oatmeal and uh, and I gave up oatmeal about six months ago decided that it was just too many carbs to start off my day and it just wasn't really working for me I'm trying to reduce my sugar cravings so recently I switched to walnuts and almonds for breakfast and I'll, literally like I'll have my coffee with a handful of walnuts and that's my breakfast and um, I'm eating a lot more like nuts these days almonds cashews and what are the filberts and even macadamia nuts? So I'm, and it seems to really be helping. I'm not having, I don't crave sugar like I used to. So um, I've always got a lot of healthy, well, a lot of nuts on board, really good healthy fats and really good for you. And I love cashews. I couldn't find organic. I try to find organic when I can, but I bought these somewhere. I can't remember where recently, uh, but yeah, that's my breakfast. So a few more things. Let's, let's talk condiments. I already showed you the liquid aminos and the rice vinegar is really just for salads, rice for vinegar and oil. That's pretty much all I use for salad dressing. And this is my favorite olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, I just realized it's not organic and it's probably not cold pressed. So my, my things evolve over time as I learn and as I try new things and I'm really trying to get to more uh, natural whole foods with as little processing as possible. And so that means when this bottle is gone, I think I'm going to be going with um, organic cold pressed olive oil so that it's just when you heat press olive oil and where you heat anything it changes it and then you lose oftentimes a lot of its nutritional value and so um, I'm going to be changing to cold press but oftentimes for my salads that's all I will um, have on it is oil and vinegar and I use I like the rice vinegar it's nice and light uh, I also have Bragg's apple cider vinegar on hand and I use that for various things but this is really my go-to for salads. I use some kind of a spray oil uh, for coating pans when I need to you know saute something or for coating pans like when I want to cook my veggie burgers or my tofu you know and I like the spray ones because I'm using less oil than if I use um, another oil and I do cook with olive oil even though they say you really shouldn't because it it ferments when you cook it when you heat it but I do anyway finally spices my I have like a basket of spices up in the cupboard but these are the ones I use consistently of course garlic powder onion powder I use this for everything and sea salt and I do oh I don't have it down here but I do buy coarse, I love coarse Mediterranean sea salt, and I have a whole bunch of different kinds of salts. I love my good salt. Curry powder, and I often do make 
my own curry from scratch with coriander and cumin and turmeric and all the other things you make curry with. Already made up. This is super easy. Sometimes, most of the time, <laughs> I just make curry with this curry powder. And cumin. I love cumin or cumin. And I make, I put this in everything. I put it in my soups. I put it in my chili. If I'm making black beans and just stirring up black beans and veggies for dinner, I'll throw a little cumin in there and it just adds a really good flavor. So I've always got cumin on hand. And I've also always got some kind of red pepper on hand as well as some red pepper sauce. And I buy whatever looks good in, in the moment. I don't really necessarily have a favorite. Actually, I just bought this chipotle and this is really really good i throw this on everything if i make a tofu scramble I, I throw it on if i make tortillas with cheese i eat it with hot sauce i really love hot sauce okay i talked fast because i knew this was going to be a long video so i tried to squeeze it all in so you wouldn't get bored i kind of need to slow down oh one more thing my crackers i love mary's crackers i always have these on hand, the super seed, everything. They're like an everything bagel. They've got poppy seed and onion and garlic and they are just really good. These are good with hummus. They're good just out of the box. This has all made me really hungry. I think I might need to go cook some dinner now. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, this is everything. I stock my RV with when I'm going to be boondocking for a couple weeks at a time. And like I said, stay tuned throughout the summer. I'm going to be showing you what I do with all this. I'm going to uh, actually be turning on the camera and cooking and showing you what I make. And next video uh, about food will be showing you how I prepare all my produce so that it fits in my refrigerator and so that it lasts as long as possible. All right, make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. There's lots of fun and exciting and interesting and thoughtful stuff coming up on my channel and in my life, I hope. I want to say a special thank you to all of my patrons who uh, continue to support my channel so that I can keep making videos. And if you want to become a patron, be sure to check over here and learn how you can become a part of our fun and friendly community. All right. Hope that was helpful. I'm going to go eat. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.